Welcome to the Physics GRE GR0177 Solutions by yours truly, the Rogue Professor. I also want to point out that you can find more solutions to this exam as well as other exams at www.physicsgre.org. So before we dive in, let's take note of our table of information provided by ETS. Uh, there's a lot of useful constants as well as some equations for moments of inertia. We will refer back to that. For now, let's jump in. Number one. Which of the following best illustrates the acceleration of a pendulum bob at points A through E? The centripetal acceleration and gravitational acceleration are vectors. The centripetal force is directed toward the center of curvature, which is the top middle point in this problem. So that is this point right here. And we know that the centripetal force equals the mass times the acceleration of the centripetal force, and that equals mv squared over r. The gravitational force and acceleration would always point downwards, so the gravitational force equals mg. When these vectors add, it changes the net acceleration direction. Uh, mass is the same in each of these two forces. F centripetal, the centripetal force, decreases away from point C as velocity decreases. Uh, points A through E would feel proportionally more of the gravitational force then and, and point more downwards as the velocity decreases the further the pendulum swings away from point C. Uh, the point where it feels the centripetal force is strongest because the velocity is maximum there. So I have a beautiful little diagram here for you that we can use to add the vectoral accelerations. Um, and as you see, if you combine these, you will get answer C. Number two, the coefficient of static friction between a small coin and the surface of a turntable is 0 0.3. The turntable rotates at 33.3 .3 revolutions per minute. What is the maximum distance from, this, from the center of the turntable at which the coin will not slide? So our frequency, f, equals 1 over t equals w over 2 pi, and t equals 2 pi over w. The centripetal force equals the frictional force in this problem for it to not slide. Uh, so mv squared over r equals umg, where u is our uh, coefficient of friction and V then is going to equal RW, uh, which we already know, and MR, MRW squared equals UMG, R equals UG over two pi F squared. Let's remember there's 60 seconds in a minute, so R is going to equal 0 0.3 times 9.8, uh, which is our gravitational acceleration, uh, divided by 33.3 divided by 60, that's our rotations per minute, times 2 pi, uh, that quantity in the de denominator squared, and that all equals 0 0.242. And that is answer D. Number three, a satellite of mass m orbits a planet of mass big M in a circular orbit of radius r. The time required for one revolution is, again, things we know, velocity equals distance over time. Uh, velocity of the orbiting object equals g big M over r, a quantity square root, and distance equals 2 pi r, where r is our radius. So 2 pi r over t equals the square root of g big M over r, and t equals 2 pi r over the square root of g big M divided by r. Uh, so as we see, t is proportional to r to the 3 halves, and that is answer D. Number four, in a non-relativistic one-dimensional collision, a particle of mass 2m collides with a particle of mass m at rest. If the particles stick together after the collision, what fraction of the initial kinetic energy is lost in the collision? So let's use our conservation of momentum. So the initial momentum equals 2 mvi. The final momentum pf equals 3 mvf. Again, where vf is the final velocity. So the initial momentum has got to equal the final momentum. So 2 mvi equals 3 mvf. And 2 thirds vi equals vf. Uh, so ei is going to equal, the initial energy is going to equal 1 half times the quantity 2 mvi squared, and that's going to equal mvi squared, 
uh, the final energy, EF, is going to equal one-half times three times the mass times the quantity two-thirds VI, that whole quantity uh, two-thirds VI, that whole quantity squared. And so our final energy is going to equal two-thirds MVI squared. And we know our heat loss is going to be our initial energy minus our final energy. So MV squared minus two-thirds MV squared is going to equal one-third MV squared. Since the initial energy equaled MV squared, EI minus EF equals one-third MV squared. And that is one-third of the initial energy, EI, and so that is answer C. Number five, we're making some progress. A three-dimensional harmonic oscillator is in thermal equilibrium with a temperature reservoir at temperature T. The average total energy of the oscillator is. So a harmonic oscillator has no translational degrees of freedom since it doesn't move in that sense, and it also does not have any rotational degrees of freedom. A harmonic oscillator does have vibrational degrees of freedom, however. A degree of freedom for each kinetic energy and potential energy is added for each dimension that the harmonic oscillator can vibrate in. So a degree of freedom for the kinetic energy is going to be in each the x, y, and z direction. Our, our degree of freedom for the potential energy is going to, again, each be in the x, y, and z direction. As the problem stated, it's three-dimensional. So we have two sets of three degrees of freedom. Two times three is six degrees of freedom for a three-dimensional harmonic oscillator. Well, our average total energy equals one-half NKT. Uh, so one-half times our number of degrees of freedom, six times KT equals three KT, and that is answer D. Number four. An ideal monatomic gas expands quasi-statically to twice its volume. If the process is isothermal, the work done by the gas is WI. If the process is adiabatic, the work done by the gas is WA. Which of the following is true? So isothermal is constant temperature, no change in internal energy. So Q equals W, and W equals NRT times LAN of the final volume over the initial volume, VF over VI. Adiabatic means no heat gained or lost. It usually happens very fast. All change in internal energy is work. Uh, so the area under the curve in the PV diagram is work. And as you can see, the isothermal process has more area under the curve than the adiabatic process, and neither process has zero work. So I've provided a pretty little diagram for you of a classic PV diagram. And as you can see, that is clearly going to be answer E. Number seven. Two long identical bar magnets are placed under a horizontal piece of paper as shown in the figure above. The paper is covered with iron filings. When the two north poles are a small distance apart and touching the paper, the iron filings move into a pattern that shows the magnetic field lines. Which of the following best illustrates the pattern that results? So the two magnetic poles uh, that are the same repel, the two north poles will repel each other and their field lines will not touch. The iron filings will display a pattern that looks like answer B. If the north and south ends had been used instead, the iron filings would display a pattern that looks like answer A. But nonetheless, it is answer B. Number eight. A positive charge Q is located at a distance L above an infinite grounded conducting plane as shown in the figure above. What is the total charge induced on the plane? So image charges, uh, we have a grounded conducting plane below one or multiple point charges which creates mirror images of the opposite charge in the plane. A ground is an object that is capable of receiving or giving electrons in order to neutralize an object. The plane will become minus Q, and the plus Q goes to the ground, which is like an infinite reservoir. So from that, we can see that number eight is answer D. Number nine. Five positive charges of magnitude Q are arranged symmetrically around the circumference of a circle of radius R. 
what is the magnitude of the electric field at the center of the circle, where k equals 1 over 4 pi eo? Because they are symmetric around the center and all positive, and they're all positive charges, they all cancel out. Therefore, the electric field at the center is therefore zero. Answer A. Number 10, a three microfarad capacitor is connected in series with a six microfarad capacitor. When a 300 volt potential difference is applied across this combination, the total energy stored in the two capacitors is well, capacitors in series, the equivalent capacitance equals C1C2 over the quantity C1 plus C2. So the equivalent capacitance equals, in our problem, 3 times 6 divided by the quantity 3 plus 6 equals 18 over 9 equals 2 microfarads. And from our cover sheet, we know that 1 microfarad equals 10 to the minus 6 farads. And uh, again, U is going to equal our stored energy. And that is going to equal one half times the equivalent capacitance uh, times our voltage squared. And so U is going to equal one half times two times 10 to the minus six times 300 squared. And U is going to equal 10 to the minus six times nine times 10 to the four. And that is going to equal 0 0.09 joules. And that is answer A that we're going to end this problem set on. Hopefully I'll see you again in the next set of 10, uh, 11 through 20 coming up.